Howdy folks, here you in again with Mike Eastman, trying to cook. This next uh, recipe I'm doing right here is one I used up there in uh, our place up in uh, Squaw Creek there in the Absorca Wilderness. All the grandkids would come up and you know, fish is really a, a major diet for anybody that wants to keep a healthy life going here. So once a week we'd have fish and most of the time I'd have salmon. And so the kids would come up and I had to devise a recipe that they liked because I just tried to throw some salmon down there and barbecue it. Here you go, kids. And so I came up with this and actually, to, to be truthful with you, not cornering around. One time I was over between Great Falls and Helena fishing on the Missouri fly fishing in March for big brown trout. And we got done. It was about a week, me and a buddy. So we decided to go into town there and we went to a pretty high end restaurant and sit down to have a last meal and we both parted our ways. And I ordered this thing called salmon on a plank. So here it come and it come on a cedar plank and there was a slab of salmon and it had this sugar on it and it, and it cooked and it glazed over on the salmon and I ate it and I said, wow, that's pretty good. And I said to myself right there, I said, self, if these guys can do this, I can do this. So when I got home, I went to Mr. YouTube and he told me how to make this recipe. And it's very simple. And so next time the grandkids come up, I made it for them and they just love it. They, when I say, hey, we're having salmon, man, they just get right to the table and forks come out and they wait. So that's the first one. The second one, we're gonna do two of them. And the second one is the one that I kind of I didn't come up with, it's a recipe and it's, it's in a brine. And the brine is, and I want to say right here, a disclaimer, I don't think you want to feed this to your kids, but it's really good for adults. And it uses, uh, again, cane sugar, but also it uses vodka. That's right, folks. Vodka in this brine and I sit it there and, and you let it soak in there for, in the refrigerator for two or three hours. And then you take it out and then what we do is uh, we'll pat it down, put it on the plank. I'll take and slice up some lemon here and squeeze some lemon on it, put it on there and shove it in the barbecuer. And it comes out pretty tasty. Now I have other recipes too that really get crazy with, with cream and all kinds of things like that. But this is, this is pretty good and it's pretty simple. If you got like two hours or two and a half hours before dinner and want to rummies up something that you and your wife would like or maybe not you can try it and see we like it so let me get started here the first couple of things i want to say before i go into this i want to explain what i use because to me this is it was try and error first i got just white sugar now that didn't work so what i use is i make sure i get brown sugar and it's cane not white sugar it's regular cane sugar and it works a lot better this coarse sea salt, the pepper, and the vodka, which I won't show you because I have my own vodka. I don't want you to know what kind I have. That's for the vodka, for the brine, and for the one we're doing for the kids, it has the Canadian or it has the uh, cane sugar, and I sprinkle a little garlic salt on it, powder, not salt, powder. It kind of just gets a little kick there, and the sugar kind of outweighs it a bit, but it, it's really great, okay? So those are the two recipes. Now, the first thing you need to do is get a plank. I want to tell you fillers and gals right now, you do not want to go down to your friendly lumber yard and grab a plank and saw it in half and use it because it's got so many chemicals in it. You guys might glow in the dark after eating that thing. So what you have to do is there's places that will send you planks that are are ripped and crust sawed and are planed with no kind of uh, chemicals or anything in them. And um, down the description below, you can see where I go. And I've been getting those planks from those people forever. Thing about those planks, I'll just give you a little suggestion here. Just kind of hang on, get on their mailing list, hang on. And eventually, like today, I noticed they popped up. I could get a five by 11 plank, I could get like 25 of them for $9.95. So they go on sale a lot. So if you just wait, 
you can get them pretty, really reasonable. Okay, so that takes care of the plank. Now, what about, what about the fish? Well, living up where I do, the nearest uh, coho or silver salmon or, is uh, probably 2,000 miles away. So I have to get it, and it freezes. And where I get it is called, this is it right here. They come in these little packages, okay? One of these is just right for me and one for my wife. Now, if you're a big eater, maybe you want to eat two of these and your wife take two of them. But these are, this is just right for us. You know, you have a salad, I don't know, corn on the cob, you know, stuff like that. Now, I want to tell you, they, they call this fresh frozen. And it's, you know, sizzlingfish.com. And I've, I've bought their shrimp. I bought a lot of seafood from them. It'll come in, it'll be frozen, hard as a brick with a piece of dry ice in it and a great big cooler. It's, it's really good. And, it's, and what they do is they catch it right there. This is caught up in Alaska. And they, they take it and they uh, do all the fillets and they take and shrink wrap it right there and, and flash freeze it right there, okay? So this is just like, almost like out of the boat. This isn't farm fed, this is right out the ocean. So that's kind of a tip if you're interested in that. So what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna get the old uh, plank and I've had this plank soaking here for two, three hours. And what I find, and here's what happens, if you've never done a plank, you probably have, a lot of people have, but if you, if you never have done a plank, you take this plank, you put it in water, I put a glass on top of it, heavy shot glass, right on top of it, and it soaks. Now, I used to, they, they always recommend, oh, soak it for an hour, an hour and a half. I found if I soaked it for three hours and this thing is completely soaked through, when I put it on my barbecuer and I start barbecuing it, and I like to run, just pay attention here, I like to run it for about, to it gets 100. And that's smoking on the smoke part. So it sits there and smokes. I have my handy dandy little thermostat there that I plug into it. And I uh, wait until it gets to 100 and then I'll crank it up to 375. Now I've cranked it up to 450 and, and this thing starts burning. And then what happens if this starts really burning or burn, it gets into the, it gets into your salmon. You don't want that. You want you want it just to be that fine line there where it's cooking and you get all that flavor from the uh, from the plank coming off that from the you know from from the water coming off and becoming you know uh, steam and it goes right in the fish. So that's kind of I, I I usually do it two and a half hours, maybe three hours. I I'll throw it in there and it, it doesn't seem to hurt it any. Maybe some people think so, but it might mean that it takes a little longer to cook, but man, I don't have to worry about it smelling like charcoal, okay? Okay, here, here's what we have right here. And this is the uh, marinated one in a brine. It's called a brine. And so it's been in there for three hours. <laughs> I kind of goofed up and took the plastic bag and stuck a hole in it, so I had to put another one <laughs> to keep it from dripping all over my wife's refrigerator. So what I usually do, this is just me, you do whatever you want. I like to put it on here, so I take it out and put it on there and pat it down. You wanna pat it down so you get rid of all that stuff. The other thing I do, just to be let you know, I always, if we put two of them in here, for it's just me and my wife now. Now if the grandkids come, we have four, so I put four in there. I put them with the flesh down in the brine, not the skin. Now some people will take and cut the skin off. I don't. I just, this comes with skin on it. I leave it on and um, I put it with the, um, the flesh down in the brine. And then here I am, I'm patting it off. I call it patting it down a little bit. And uh, just like this, some people wash it off. You can do that if you don't like it, but I kind of like some of the vodka on it. Myself. So I put it right here. There it is. My hands are nice and grummy, so I go over here and wash them. And my handy towel. Okay, so that one is almost ready. And what we do, what I like to do with that, 
This one is I take a lemon and I and then I uh, cut the lemon. So I cut like this one is going to be three of these. I'll put three of them right here, but I won't put it on yet. I'll just cut them. One, two, three. Then I take the rest of the, not the rest, but some of it, and I, I just, just kind of drizzled it on there. I just drizzle, just drizzle a little on there, you know. Because fish really go well with lemons, okay? So you notice I cut too many, but I put two of them on there. This is the next one. This is going to be for the kids. I'll go over here and I cut it right here and I wash it off. I just cut it open like here. And then um, I'll put it on here to transfer it over here. But I take it out like this. Look at that thing. Just like fresh. And believe me, I've caught them. I, I've been up there many times fly fishing for them. And this is good. So I rinse them in cold water and then I will take this over here. And then we're going to put this one right on with the other one. This is a good size for the kids. Actually, when they're real little, like six, seven, eight, they don't eat. A whole one but once they get to be teenagers they they'll scoff that up in no time at all it's nutritious i mean this much salmon every every week or fish it doesn't have to be salmon it's really good so i got my secret get the kids to eat stuff this is cane sugar but what the first thing i do is i put a little little of this garlic pepper on top not very much. You got to watch this thing. See, like that? Isn't that nice? Well, that's a little too much, but I'll move it around a little bit. These holes are a little too big. I guess the guy wants to sell this, puts big holes in it, but just a little bit. And don't worry, folks, because it won't be garlicky because when it cooks, the sugar kind of offsets the garlic, if you get what I mean, and cooking that way. And then what we do is we take this and generously put it on top of, let's move this over like this. Because what will happen is when this cooks, this will glaze on top and roll down and it'll be kind of like a glaze on top, okay? If you do it right, we'll hope we might can do it right. But I just kind of pat it up here, get it, because it will come off. It will roll off and just be a little bit up on top but we got our two sitting here ready to go and let me wash my hands and then we'll then we'll take it out and the barbecue's been going i got it smoking there like i've said before i like to smoke it till it gets to 100 internal so get a little smoke flavor to the old salmon everybody likes a little smoke so it's it's going it's smoking see so I put it in there and just to let you know I either use hickory or cherry that's my preference you can try anything you want but it seems to work better for me one of those two pellets so then I stick this in this is my handy dandy I stick it right in there just like that and I shut the lid and gotta put my darn darn rock on top of it because my lid I still haven't got a new one didn't seem my wife didn't catch that video I did last time so maybe she'll catch this one okay so we let it sit there it takes a little while because it's on a plank to get to a hundred just you know, this isn't something that you're going to slap together in 15 minutes and throw it on the barbecue and burn a hamburger, okay? But believe me, when it's all said and done, you're going to really like this if you do this right. So it hit 100, so I got it smoked. I crank it up to 375 because my, my Traeger at 375, it really isn't 375. It's probably about 350. It's, you know, it's an older model. And, but anyway, I, I've tried it at 450 with this thing, and it, it burns it pretty bad. It cooks it quicker, but it, it's, it doesn't come out as well. So we're going to let this thing 
sit here and cook and the internal I like the internal and everybody has their own temperature but I usually like it about 145 to 1 148 somewhere in there and I'll you'll see I'll pluck it and and I like it flaky but I don't like it dry so if you cook this like for like 148 149 5, uh, 152 or 3 you're going to dry that little salmon out it's going to be flaky all right but you're going to lose a whole bunch of taste so that that's that's what I do when I cook these so we'll just let it uh, cook and we'll come back when it hits about 146 or 7 and then we can take her out so we'll see you in a bit all right now the salmon is cooking and uh, so this is my little deal here I I take all this smelly stuff and throw it in the, my plastic bag ziplocs and that way my wife doesn't want me doesn't complain about me having to take the garbage out every 10 seconds or 10 minutes because it stinks. So I'll just go like this, wrap it up, goes in the garbage, never smell this. Okay, it's done. Well, it's nice and flaky, folks. So I put it on this little thing like this. Looks kind of good. And because I soaked it, you notice it just kind of one side was a little bit here, but it's still, it's not burnt. And some people talk about having to have a, some water to squirt on it so these don't burn, but if you soak it enough, you don't have to. Well, this is gonna be different than last time, folks. I sat down and I didn't even eat, eat the hamburger. I went ahead and ate the corn, which was good. And then after they got done shooting, the crew, scarfed it up and I think this time we're going to have them sit down a couple of them and taste it and let you know how it is instead of me because you know I'm going to tell you it tastes good but we'll have Lindsay come in come here Lindsay you sit down here and you you take a bite or two and then one of the others can sit and take a bite or two and see what you think that one is that one's a brime and this is with uh, with a sugar on it okay I'll get out of the picture oh Mike come on this mm -hmm. is the what now i'm really feeling the pressure good okay I'm trying to do left-handed things with my my right-handed self well, i'm gonna put some sugar on it but oh here's the piece of the sugar yeah oh i can see why the grandkids like that i don't think anyone wouldn't like that Mmm, it's still really juicy too, Mike. It is flaky, but you didn't, you tempt it just right. Mmm. I grew up eating this kind of stuff all the time. Remember, this is Wyoming, okay? This isn't on the coast. That's really good. I used to, used to take it for granted. I used to eat, like I said, all this all the time. So every once in a while, trying something a little bit different is really good. Which one do you like the best? The lemon's really good. That is very flavorful. And like Mike said, you don't want it too dry, and this is just perfect, in my opinion. So, my approval. <laughs> well, I hope you enjoy this. This is just kind of what my wife and I up there, middle of nowhere, I got to become a kind of a foodie a little bit after filming. I do this. Leave a comment if it's really bad. You don't, you're not going to expect me to answer any of them because I don't have a computer that answers people. I even got, only got a flip phone, okay? But, you know, I got some more recipes. I got a really good uh, one on uh, ribs and also one on beef ribs that, that uses a wine. I'll take and marinate it for 24 hours in a kind of a wine uh, sauce that my wife really likes. And... You know, just trial and error, and I hope you enjoy this, and you folks have a nice day. This from Mike Eastman out in Wyoming. Have a good day. Toodaloo.